What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today is day 29 in our 30 tips in 30 days video series and I'm going to be showing you how to do some cool airbrushing techniques in Photoshop. Alright guys, what is going on? This is Eric Vasquez here and we are just about to jump into uh, some cool airbrushing techniques. So um, all I'm doing here is creating a new document and grabbing a gradient, um, a gradient tool and selecting a radial gradient that fades from black to transparent. And if you don't have that you know, available here, you'll see it's pretty much this black that fades and it has the checkerboard pattern. Um, and from there, I'm making sure that I have this reverse box checked off so that when I click in the center of my document, Instead of going from black to transparent, it's actually doing the opposite, going from transparent to black as we get closer to the edges. Okay, so that creates this kind of uh, nice vignetted effect. All right, from there, I'm just going to grab my type tool and type in, oh, hey, it's not 2015 anymore, is it? 2016, booyah. And then from there, oh, yep, I'm going to change the font and pick something a little bit more fun, something maybe like a sans serif, you know, like a nice, let's try like a Bedoni. Bedoni's all right. Be bold. Yeah, something like that, all right? So I'm gonna use like a nice sans serif font, place it roughly in the middle, but if you wanna find the exact middle, you can just uh, unlock your background layer and press Command T to do a free transform. And now you'll see you have these anchors on the side as well as the top. So what I like to do is just drag a, uh, a couple of guides so that I know exactly where the middle of my document is. And that way, when I select my type and do a free transform, I can see that it's just a little bit off. All right, so I want to keep it centered somewhere around there. Okay, from here, I'll create another new layer and add a clipping mask by moving your mouse in between uh, the new layer and the type layer and holding down the alt option key and then you'll see that the cursor changes so you're just going to click and now you've got a clipping mask. Now uh, nothing has visibly changed yet but you are going to see in the next step uh, why this is important. Okay so from here go ahead and grab your brush tool from the, uh, the tool palette over here and use a light opacity and a flow of maybe around 40 or 50 percent somewhere in there all right, and make it large enough so that you can you can see what's happening with your brush, okay? And then, um, you know, switch back to your solid white. So if you want to toggle between your foreground and background colors, um, all you have to do is press the X key on the keyboard. And from there, I'm actually going to click around some of these numbers a little bit, right? And you'll see what's happening. None of this uh, white is spilling over to the outside. It's actually only showing up inside these letters now and I'm using a nice soft brush to do this alright so by keeping the flow and the opacity nice and low you can kinda gradually build up this effect and it's much more uh, gradual <laughs> when you do it this way so you can gradually build gradually um, but I'm gonna keep doing that a little bit around the letter here just to make it kind of interesting and it's gonna start to look like uh, you know highlights like these are areas are, are popping out um, a little bit more and all I did you can also add a layer mask to your airbrush layer um, so that if you know you get an area that you're not happy with or you want to back it off a little bit uh, you just paint into your layer mask with black okay but then make sure that you go back and have your actual layer selected when you want to you know add some add some highlights back into it so this is the general idea right and you can you know, make it as intense or as subtle as you want. I, I like kind of starting off subtle and then and then trying to build it up a little bit more. And um, I'm not too concerned with um, you know having a consistent light source at the moment. Um, just kind of going for like a cooler, you know, effect. It's you know just to make these uh, numbers and everything pop out. All right, but you'll see this is kind of a this is a one way that you could do some airbrushing. Uh, which is kind of a cool thing and you know some of you guys might uh, be thinking oh well you know why doesn't he just apply a layer style and do you know an inner glow well here's why if you were to do that you double click it inner glow 
manipulate the size. Yeah, that's kind of what we're going for, but you're not really getting getting anything in the middle of the letters here, and it's applying it you know uniformly over all the areas of the letter. So this just allows for much more uh, freedom as far as you know where you're placing those highlights and everything like that. You know what I mean? All right, so we're gonna push it just a little bit further. And you can kind of see you know, how we're getting that effect built up, okay? Um, and from there, you can actually, you know, create a new layer. And you could do this again if you wanted to use, you know, some color. Um, or you could actually take uh, your lasso tool or any of your selection tools and just make, you know, a shape, like cut into it. And that'll give you more of a, you know, a hard edge. Obviously, that's a did a pretty bad job there, but let's say for example uh, you want to come here to the edge of the 16, right? I'm just going to use my pen tool, click once, click again for the second point, and I'm going to click and you know hold and drag so that I can control the, the curve of this point. Okay, from there I'm just going to go around and, and close the shape. It doesn't really matter how neat this area is on the outside. Alright, and then you can either hold down the control key and click on your path to get this menu or you can hit uh, command enter and that's going to activate that selection alright so this is another way you can make a very precise um, selection and kinda get like a nice hard edge like that and then you can move it using your arrow keys to get you know uh, to, to move the points a little bit alright and you can also do this on the inside of the letter here the inside of the number rather so you can get something like this going on. Right, and you'll see that kind of effect. It looks like a like a bevel, you know, kind of, um, which is kind of neat. Right, and you can do this um, on all of these numbers if you want. Um, and it's actually a, a really cool looking effect that uh, I just kind of enjoy messing around with. And, you know, you can get pretty creative here, guys, when you start, you know, introducing color. Um, and things like that, you know, you can get some pretty cool, like almost glossy looking effects, you know. And this is this is usually how I go about achieving that type of effect in Photoshop when I want to make something look, you know, shiny and a little bit more uh, customized or tailored. And of course, you know, make your brush change the size uh, often, you know, using your uh, your bracket keys. And that way, uh, you know, you can mix it up a little bit so everything's not exactly the same size. You know, you might want some areas that are uh, slightly larger for your highlights and you might want some areas that are uh, slightly smaller. Alright. So I'm just going to do that a little bit more. And You know, I, one of the reasons I chose to only use, you know, uh, chose to use 2016 is because I only have to do this for, you know, four times instead of uh, picking some long word that would take me you know way too long to do this all right and one other cool thing to note here is uh, you'll notice that I've made a selection that's kind of encompassing the inner part of the letter but you can always invert that by pressing command shift I on the keyboard and then you'll be kind of painting on the opposite side of your selection all right and again uh, I'm just gonna repeat this one last time here on the two Make sure to close the shape, and then press Command Enter again, and then just you know continue to click, change the size of your brush, and gradually build up those highlights. Okay, and maybe a little something down here, because why not? Okay, <clears throat> and you know this is, you know this can be fun because I mean you can really go to town on this kind of stuff, but. You'll see how quickly it is to uh, to build this effect up, and you know I'm not totally thrilled with this edge of the 16 here, so um, I'm gonna actually select it and then just do a, a free transform so that I can pull it over to the left a little bit, and then that little edge that I had there before is just gonna be concealed because it's outside of this clipping mask, and you'll see if I turn that clipping mask off, now you can see all the shapes and the shading outside of these uh, letters which we do not want. Alright, so that's kinda how you do the airbrushing thing. 
Um, and it's, you know, it's pretty cool because you can always come in, uh, let's say I make another new layer, put it behind the type layer, and now I'm just using my lasso tool to create some kind of weird abstract shape or, you know, something along those lines. I don't know what the heck that is supposed to be. Um, but, you know, the same thing applies, you know, I'm just, you create a selection and then you fill it where you want, you know, the highlights or the colors to be, and it's only going to appear in that area, right? Obviously, that wasn't uh, the, the greatest looking thing in the world, but um, I think you guys kind of get the idea. You know, and you can, you know, add more color to it. Um, if you want to see how that looks, you can also um, put this inside of your, your type. Something like that, you know, with an set to an overlay. Um, just a quick way to add some color to it. And again, the vignette is nice because it kind of uh, draws your focus in towards the center a little bit. So, um, you know, then you can go about uh, just adding more stuff to it if you wish. Um, I was going to add a radial gradient to use as a highlight, but I forgot to check off the reverse box. So that's kind of what I'm looking for, more of a normal uh, radial gradient, just fading from white to transparent. And I'm just using it as a way to um, kind of add some more highlights around the letters and things like that. right? And if you change the blending mode to overlay, it'll create kind of a nicer uh, looking effect instead of just having that harsh white there. Alright, I'm going to do like one, one or two more of these and just like move it around, you know, see, you have to, you know, you have to play around and experiment with this stuff to see what looks best. Um, and of course it's all subjective, you know, what one person thinks look good, looks good is not necessarily what, uh, what everyone else may feel, but, you know, that's okay. That's why it's art and that's why it's yours, you know. Alright, so... Again, you know, this is mostly just to demonstrate the technique. I know, um, you know, this could be could be better. Normally, I would spend you know more time doing this. And um, one thing that I really have a lot of fun with that uses the same technique um, is creating like like drips. You know, like just cool, glossy, liquidy kind of effects. And um, you know, it, the same techniques apply. You know, if I wanted to, I would just uh, create a new layer come in here with my pen tool and you know just kind of follow the the path of the the letter or the, the number or whatever it is and you can kind of create these um, you know these uh, abstract shapes right like say I wanted to do something like this that's just like this long like gooey nasty kind of looking thing you know or or it could be cool it reminds me a lot of like um, you know like ooze or something like that you know um, right, so I would just kind of make a shape like this, and then, you know, maybe like fill it with a color, just sample a color, and then create a new layer, and maybe sample some of this red, and you can just toggle your eyedropper by holding down the Alt Option key, and then I would actually do some of that airbrushing inside of that selection, right, like that, come around the edges, and decide which areas you want to, to pop out a little bit more you know and you can kind of do this around the whole letter or just you know in, in more specific areas where you want your highlights and then of course again you can use uh, a white color set to overlay to really kind of push the, the highlights a bit more you know so that's just you know a cool little uh, extra that you can you can play around with you know, something like that where it's just kind of dripping off of the letters. And, you know, maybe you like it, maybe not. It just kind of looks like blood. But it's just one more thing that you can do um, with this effect. And, you know, if you want to see how other colors look, I like to just uh, add a hue saturation adjustment layer because it's really easy to just move this slider around and, and see how, you know, different colors look and things like that. Um, you know, just to change the vibe of it and, and, and everything. So... Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. I, I hope that you uh, found this technique useful, and uh, hopefully you have some fun playing around with this. And uh, if you did enjoy this tip and all of our uh, videos in this series, then I hope that you will go ahead and sign up for our email list and, you know, like it, share it, help us spread the word, and let us know how we can help you design better. See you next time.